muscle tissue. Like for example, when a person has a heart attack, they give it nitroglycerin. Because nitroglycerin is then converted into NO, and that helps relax that heart tissue and relieves the pain from a heart attack. And also, it relaxes tissue in, uh, when a person takes Viagra. To, so it increases blood flow somewhere. <laughs> you know, that's a good question because I think you're right. I, I think the original, when research in, in that drug was first done, it wasn't, it was by accident they discovered it was used to treat, um, uh, well, what's treated for Viagra? <laughs> And actually, I think there's been research. I read recently too that there's more research in the biography being used for another another purpose. All I can't remember off the top of my head what that purpose is. It's one of the kids. These uh, they go they have growths. I've seen yeah. some children are born with growths. Oh. Uh -huh. That's something about the growth. It, it, it uh, makes the growth stop. Yes, yeah, so note that these. See, I mean, this is really why it takes. It costs 500 million to a billion dollars to develop a drug because really, in a lot of cases, it's hit or miss. It has to go through four phases of trials, and if it fails in the last phase, you know that company has spent a lot of money testing that drug, and if it doesn't pass that last test, then there's another market. That's, that's a lot of money down the line. Anyway, that's why it's important to understand the mechanism of reaction. Anyway, this reaction is given by this rate loss, so the rate is equal to rate constant K times NO to the first power times Cl2 to the first power. So what is the overall order of this reaction? Is it zero, one, or two? Okay, so note that it's first order in NO, first order in Cl2. So the overall order, if you add up the individual orders, is Two. Yes, yeah, so the overall order is two. So we have first order in NO, first order in CO2, so one plus one is two. So this tells us that in the rate determining step in this reaction, you need one NO molecule and one CO2 molecule to collide together in the slowest step in the reaction. Okay? Now, in terms of probability, if you have, let's just say that this is one. This is one NO molecule here, and this is a Cl2 molecule. So note that they have to collide together for that reaction to occur. Okay, so in the second order process, you know, it's relatively speaking, it's pretty, the probability is pretty high that two molecules or two different molecules will collide together. Okay. Now, that's why I think I mentioned this that you can either have a zero, first, or second order reaction. Third order reactions are pretty rare because note that the probability of three, three molecules or three atoms colliding in the same space in the same time is pretty low, or at least much lower than just having two atoms and molecules to collide in the same space at the same time. Okay, so if you play pool, note that even if you're a bad pool player, it's not so easy to get three pool balls to collide at the same point at the same time. So that's sort of, you can use that as an analogy of, of how chemical reactions occur. Okay, so the following reaction mechanism as proposed is a two-step mechanism. So in the first step, you have NO plus Cl2 producing NOCl2. And then in the second step of the mechanism, NOCl2 plus NO produces two NOCl. Now, we said that if we add up these two steps, we should get the overall reaction. So if we get the overall reaction, we add this reaction to this one. Okay, so again, if we add up this, this reaction and the second reaction, do we get this reaction up here? Yes. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Yeah. Q 
Okay, so, so far so good with our reaction mechanism. The question says, if this reaction mechanism, mechanism is correct, what does it imply about the relative rates of these two steps? In other words, is one, is one step faster than the other one? In other words, is, is this reaction faster than the second one, or is it the other way around? Okay, so to answer that question, here's what I did. I wrote the rate law for each elemental step. So for step one, the rate law equals K times NO to the first power times CO2 to the first power. Now, for an elemental step, you don't have to do a reaction. The order of the reaction with respect to each reactant is based on the coefficients and the balanced chemical equation. Okay, so again, when you're looking at an overall reaction, you have to do an experiment to figure out the order. If you're looking at a reaction mechanism, elemental step, the order is based on the coefficients and the balanced chemical equation. Okay, so in this case here, note that for step one, it's first order in NO and first order in Cl2. For step two, note you have NOCl2, it's first order, and then NO, which is also first order. So to figure out the rate of each step, does this rate law fit the rate law from the experiment? Okay, so here's our rate law from the experiment here. Does this rate law fit the rate law from the experiment? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Let's go to step two. Does this rate law fit the rate law from the experiment? No. Okay, so since this rate law fits the rate law from the experiment, this must be the rate determining step in the reaction, which means that this is a slow step in the reaction mechanism. So again, the order of the reaction tells the number of reactant particles. So based on the experiment, there's one NO and one CO2 involved in the rate determining step in the reaction mechanism. And then based on this mechanism, this tells us there's one NO and one CO2 involved in that step. This first step is the rate determining step. Now, to determine a reaction mechanism, you have to do experiments to see if you can detect these reaction intermediates. So, for example, note that NOCl2 is the product of this first reaction. If you can do an experiment that detects this compound, that suggests that this could be the mechanism of this reaction. Okay. If you don't detect this, that means, well, you gotta think of another mechanism for that reaction. Okay? Okay. Let's go to the next one. Oh, this is quiz five. So we talked about quiz five last uh, on Tuesday. Now, here's some related quiz five question. Now let's go back to quiz five, look at the reaction. So we have in this case, ozone is destroyed by NO. Here's the NO again. So this is why NO is considered a pollutant from the exhaust of our cars because it goes from the surface of the earth up in the up into the ozone layer it can destroy the ozone. So note that O3 reacts with NO to form NO2 plus O2. Okay, so here's four possible mechanisms for this reaction. Let's take a look. Let me write this on the top one. <coughs> Okay, so then we have O3 plus NO. That gives us, let's see, it gives us NO2 plus O2. And then we said the rate is equal to K times, let's see, was it first order of each one? Based, do you remember what the rate law was? For this reaction based on the data? Yeah. Let's see, so based on this, was it, was it first order in O3 and first order in NO? Okay, so here's four possible mechanisms. 
So which mechanism best fits the data? In other words, which mechanism fits the rate law for this reaction? Okay, so what we're looking for is that we're looking for an elemental step which involves 1O3 and 1NO molecule. Okay. The other way of looking at it is you can write a rate law for each step in each mechanism. So for example, if you take a look at, at mechanism 1, note that in the first step the rate's going to be Rate is equal to K times what? Yeah, times O3. And in the second step, the rate is going to equal K times? Yeah, O times NO. Do either of those rate laws fit this rate law? No. So we can eliminate mechanism one. So let's take a look at mechanism two. Does mechanism two fit the rate law? Yes. Okay, so we'll do the same thing. So for mechanism two, first step, you have rate equals K times yeah, O3 times NO. Does that match the rate law? Yeah. So note that in this mechanism, which one is going to be the rate determining step? The first step or second step? It would be the first step. So mechanism two is a possible mechanism. Look up mechanism three. Does that match the rate law? What about mechanism four? Does that match the rate law? Yes, that matches the rate law too. So note that mechanism two and four match the rate law. So what can we do to figure out which one is the actual mechanism? Yes, yeah, so like we just said, we want to do an experiment to see if we detect either NO3 or oxygen atoms, or if we just 